March of the Machine, Episode 2, Holding Your Breath. Written by K. Arsino Rivera. Read by Wyatt Fawcett. Chandra hates waiting. She hates everything about this. The safe house they're all cooped up inside, the daily check-ins from other walkers waiting to hear the worst, the excruciating agony of knowing a blow is coming, but not knowing when or where it will strike. For the past week, they haven't been living in any real sense of a word. They've been waiting. That's the plan, after all. For two weeks, they'll wait here in one of Liliana's cabins on Dominaria. Though she swore these were simple placeholders for a soon-to-be-reconstructed Vess Manor, they were crawling with the sword of wards that make any demon think twice. Chandra has no idea Liliana even knew so many wards. When pressed, Liliana simply said she'd learn to protect her investments. At the end of these two weeks, if they've not gotten any word, then they're to assume everyone's died and proceed accordingly. If they get news before then, well, they'll act accordingly to the news. If it's good, they'll spread the word to the others that there's nothing to worry about. If it isn't good, they'll tell the others to get ready for war. Some take the waiting better than others, better than she does. Vivian's out more often than she's in, which gives everyone a little breathing room. Her cooking's incredible, too. Ren's also usually out, but never too far away. Waiting's fine for her, so she claims, but Chandra knows she's getting listless. Ren might be a dryad, but there's a fire within her, too, and fire's always hungry for more. And then there's Liliana, who hates waiting as much as Chandra does. They don't usually talk about it, because talking about it is like tearing open a wound, but it's something they've sensed about each other. When Chandra returns in the afternoons, after her talks with Ren, Liliana's often got a story ready for her. Sometimes it's quiet company. She'll sit there reading some ancient tome or reviewing plans for the renovation while Chandra waits. How can she even focus on something like that right now? Everyone's trying to be normal, but nothing's normal, and no one wants to talk about it. She never asks if there's news, and someone arrives asking to hear some. It's usually Liliana who answers, sparing Chandra the trouble. But every day it feels worse. It's like there's a knife against her skin, and every day someone drags it a little further along. Every drop of blood is a thing she hasn't spoken out loud and a thought she's too afraid to think. Phyrexian weaponry, black oil, a Johnny and Tamio, lost to them forever. So different from the people they'd been only a few months ago. A plane full of people like that, people who do that to others, maybe it's wrong to think of them as people at all. She wants to strike back, at least if she's in the thick of it, she'd know what's going on, even if the answers weren't good. Lately, none of the answers have been good. If Nyssa was... More than anything, she wants the waiting to be over. For now, she'll pass the time with Ren. You have to focus on your breathing. Fire needs air, just like we do, Chandra says. Jai used to tell her that to calm her down when things got bad. If she could control her breathing then she could control her fire, and if she controlled her fire, everything would be alright. Jaya's dead, a Johnny killed her, and Chandra's not sure if any of this is going to be right again. But she has to hope that it will be. Ren's not great at breathing. Chandra doesn't hold it against her, she's a dryad after all. Most of them don't even have lungs. Comparisons to human breathing are a little hard to grasp, Ren says. Flames lick up between her barky skin. In spite of the pain she must be in, she sounds cheerful. Right, Chandra says. Scratching at the back of her head, Nissa spoke tree. She probably had tons of dryad friends, even. She'd know what to say, but she isn't here. Think of it like the fire is something you have to shape. You've got to find the parts of it that aren't helpful and cut them off. Better, Ren says. The fire does flicker, but it doesn't retreat as much as Chandra wanted. 
She sets a hand on Ren's shoulders, feeling like it's a thing that a mentor should do, but without much of an idea of how to mentor. Jaya left her with so many lessons, Chandra's not sure she internalized all of them. How can she pass all of that on to Ren? Somebody else would be better at this, someone older, someone... Someone like a Johnny. Chandra extinguishes the thought. Let's do it together, she says. I'll be right here with you. Some fires aren't worth the air. The trick is knowing which ones. All right, Ren says. Although that seems terribly rude to the fire. Chandra closes her eyes, takes a breath. In the back of her mind, she can hear Jaya's steady voice telling her to focus on the feeling of the air through her nostrils. She repeats the words, clumsy and inelegant, as they come to her. You have to talk fire. Find out what it wants to do. And then the brash war horn boom of Tyvar's arrival falls like an axe between them. The two of them look over to the safe house in time to see two figures limp through the door. Chandra's breath stops in her throat. There are no more words between her and Ren. There's no need for them. Chandra makes it to the safe house, shooting a flare into the murky gray sky and hoping it'll be enough to catch Vivian's attention. And for all that she hates waiting, Chandra finds herself hesitating at the threshold. Only three of them came back. Maybe the first three, maybe not. But which three would they be? She runs through the possibilities in her head and she hates herself for doing it. News is good to have, whatever it might be. But who waited beyond the door? She's never going to find out if she stays out here. Chandra takes a deep breath, steps into the safe house with her eyes closed. We were right about the tree. They have their own. It's corrupted, twisted. They outplanned us, had an answer for everything. Shaping reality to whatever they want. Three voices. None misses. Another cut. Chandra swallows. There's other stuff to think about. The plan's bigger than any of them individually. Kaito, mostly whole, leans against a bust. Kaya and Tyvar are slumped on the couch when she opens her eyes, both covered in blood and dirt and grease. Liliana, of all people, is attending to the injured. There are small vials of liquid laid out before her on the floor. She pours some onto a cloth before dabbing it against one of Tyvar's wounds. It's Liliana who notices Chandra walking in. It isn't good news. Didn't feel like it was, Chandra says. Never seen anything fouler, Tyvar says. A haunted look comes over him. The world tree essence they stole from Kaldheim, they used it to make a monstrosity. It isn't even alive. They're using it to invade the other planes. Kaya can't stand sitting anymore. She's up and pacing. Moving whole armies, weapons like we've never seen before. There's almost no one left on New Phyrexia but those machine nightmares. Soon, they're going to be everywhere. But we've still got to fight back, don't we? We've got everyone else from the other planes. Round them up. Crash back to New Phyrexia and take Norn down. Chandra's babbling and she knows it, but she can't stop. Air, she thinks. Air. Just keep breathing. All of this is worth the air. This isn't over. It can't be. There's sympathy in Kaya's eyes. No, we can't. Maybe we should wait for Vivian before we get into it, Kaido cuts in. Chandra doesn't like that at all. We've done enough of that. How are they controlling it? I'm just saying, Kaya starts, as gentle as she can be. Kaya, please, Chandra says. It surprises her how pained she sounds. Tell me what happened. Kaya swallows. They got Nizza. And just like that, Chandra forgets how to breathe. She sputters. She knew. On some level, she knew when Nissa wasn't with the group that... Before she can summon something to say, the door opens behind them. There's news, Vivian says from behind them. Wait, where's Jace? Fashionably late, I imagine, Liliana says. She ties off the bandage around Tyvar's chest. He'll be here any moment now. Kaya closes her eyes. No, he won't be. Liliana's face, at least, shows no sign of distress. Her voice comes sharp and hurt, the same hurt in Chandra's chest. Don't be ridiculous. He fought valiantly, but the beasts, says Tyvar. 
Bravery doesn't matter much when your opponent never tires, never errs, Kaito says. He can't seem to look up from the floor, or when you're that far gone. That doesn't make any sense, Liliana says. She stands, picking up a tray of vials to hide her trembling hands. All of this nonsense was his idea. He wouldn't just fail. He doesn't do that. At the end, I don't think it was him anymore. He became one of them, Kaito says. Liliana's taking deeper breaths, but she doesn't want anyone to notice. What do you mean? We don't have time to get caught up in the details, Vivian interjects. What happened? Nahiri's going to Zendikar. The Wanderer must have gotten away. Elspeth must have already gone to Theros. We saw the Phyrexians take Nahiri too, Tyvar says. Elspeth didn't make it, Kaito adds. The Wanderer is probably heading back home, but there's no way Elspeth made it out of that. There's no way Elspeth Tyrell died on New Phyrexia, Vivian says. Kaya's brows knit together, her eyes flick over Liliana. Let's just get it out of the way. The last time we saw Elspeth, her sword was jutting out of Jace's back. She pinches the bridge of her nose before continuing. That messed up tree was already connected to a dozen places at least. If he set off the Silex, we could have lost them all. The thing was ticking away to the end of days, and there wasn't any time. So she... Kaya trails off. Tyvar picks up again. Elspeth ran him through. Picked up the Silex and planeswalked into the blind eternities. A noble sacrifice. She must be feasting with the Valkyries now. Oh, shut up, hisses Liliana. The air in the safe room's gone cold. Jace and Nyssa are both gone. Nahiri too. Even Elspeth couldn't make it out in the end. Out of everyone they sent, only four returned. And of the four, only three are here. Everything they feared is coming true. The Phyrexian invasion is underway. Vivian settles onto the floor with them, having lost her proud bearing in the face of this news. This is worse than I thought. That's the only reason we're here. You need to understand what we're up against, Kaya says. The whole multiverse has to understand. Now, as I was saying, well, you can't keep going without me. It's a sudden interjection, and with an odd amount of force meant to detract from the wavering of its speaker, Liliana's already making for the door. I'm going to send word to Strixhaven. You should hear the story, starts Tyvar, but Liliana is already shaking her head. I've got a good enough idea of your kind of storytelling. Noble sacrifices never sit well with me. Chandra opens her hands, then closes it into a fist. What if there's a way we can help the others? Chandra heard people say Liliana's all sharp edges and ambition. That's true. But it's also true that at certain angles, those give away. The tilt of Liliana's head now is anything but sharp. The ambition in her eyes has changed to deep sympathy. You want to go back there yourself, don't you? All eyes fall on Chandra. She's keenly aware of the way they're looking at her. What they must be thinking. Of course she does. She's impulsive. Chandra can hear the lectures starting, and she's already tired of them. She's tired of sitting around and waiting for the world to end. Yeah. Yeah, I do, she says. There must be another way to take the world tree down. You're all acting like it's over. Kaya presses the heel of her palm against her eyes. She takes a breath. I can't let you go back. Let me, Chandra says. She takes a step towards her. You aren't letting me do anything. The plan is to let the others know what's going on, Vivian says. She's cooler, more collected. But there's no mistake what she thinks of Chandra's idea. We can rally our forces figure out some way to fight back, but we can't do that if we rush in headlong. There's plenty of you to go and do that, Chandra argues. Plenty of all of us. But if we keep fighting back against what's already there, we aren't going to make any progress. We have to cut them off at the root if they're going to keep coming. The others exchange looks. At least, they're thinking about it. Liliana, for all of her earlier protestation, hasn't left yet. She remains halfway between Chandra and the door. She understands, doesn't she? She must understand better than anyone here what this feels like. It's Kaya who spoke up next. Chandra, I understand where you're coming from. Truly, I do. But you can't begin to understand what happened in New Phyrexia. This isn't something you can just blow in and solve without planning. We planned for it, and we barely made it out. 
I've been an assassin for years, and I almost lost my head in there. Nahiri dealt with Eldrazi. We lost her too. If you go in there, you aren't just going to die. You're going to have your flesh stripped off, your bones shaped into metal, your mind warped into a sick worldview. Next time we see you, you'll be telling us about the joys of being one with Phyrexia. Vivian's right. The best thing to do is try to avoid losing anyone else. Once we're done here, you must return home to Kaladesh and tell people how to prepare. That's the best we can do for them. The answer is coming out of Chandra's mouth before her mind's had a chance to stop it. You're treating me like a kid. I'm not treating you like a kid. I'm trying to look out for you. This isn't Ravnica. The Eternals are nothing compared to Norn's fleshless legions. I know this is coming from a good place. You want to help everyone. You want to save the multiverse, fine. But there were better ways to do it than running off half-cocked into a job a whole team of us couldn't finish. Kai is saying things, but... All Chandra can hear is more of the same. Kai doesn't see the point. Tyvar has to understand, right? He loves big challenges. But when she catches his eye, he averts his gaze. Valor's commendable, echoes Tyvar. But so is knowing which battles are yours to fight. Kai and I are only here to tell you what happened. Go where you're needed, tend to your own, and die where your bones are home. This is everyone's battle, Chandra says. Which means everyone's got a say in it, says Vivian. And my say is that we don't waste any more time and resources on something we know isn't going to work. I know how you're feeling. Admitting you've lost isn't easy, Kaito says. But we only lost the fight. We can keep our home safe. We can win the war. Chandra takes a deep breath. Feels like she's going to explode. This is the most obvious thing in the world, and they either can't or won't see it. What about the people stuck on New Phyrexia? Are we just going to leave them there? No one wants to answer it. Not directly. The silence that comes over the safe house then is nothing but another form of waiting. And Chandra hates it just as much as she hates this whole situation. If she could burn everything down right now, if she could find a new start in the flames, then she would. Standing here is making her soul itch. Tell me, are we abandoning them? Breathing's getting harder to do, or easier. The breaths are big and sharp now, feeding the fire growing in the pit of her stomach, heat sears in the corner of her eyes. Chandra, Liliana says, soft as shadow on snow. She'd want you to stay safe, wouldn't she? Why'd she have to say that? Chandra's been trying so hard not to think about it, trying to keep her imagination at bay, but Liliana's cut it loose. It's easy to imagine Nyssa here, as it is to call fire. Chandra can see it so clearly. The determination written on Nyssa's face, her eyes gone canopy green, the angle of her ears. She can feel Nyssa's hands on her shoulder. She can smell moss and pine. She can hear the words, even if she doesn't want to imagine them. It hurts. Gods, it hurts. She feels like she's bleeding out in front of every single one of them, and not a one is offering her any help at all. Chandra takes another deep breath. Air, she thinks. Just keep breathing. When we lose someone, we have to do honor to their memory, Liliana says. I haven't lost her. Chandra fires back. Kaya's exasperation increases by the second. She's exhausted. And it's in every line of her face. She's gone, Chandra. No, she isn't. If we stop the Phyrexians, then we can figure out how to stop... How to stop whatever's happening. How to make it better. You can't give up on... This is about more than any one person, Vivian cuts in. We're tending to a forest here, not a single tree. Don't you think I know that, she says. The faint glow at the edges of her vision tells her she's flaring up. She didn't intend to, but it's fine, maybe even good. All this feeling has to go somewhere. Don't you think I know how many lives are on the line? That's why I want to go back. We're never going to win if all we do is run away from them. Chandra starts Kaya, but it's too late. She's beyond listening now. 
I'm leaving, she says. You can go warn the other planes if you want to, but I'm not leaving our friends behind. You're going alone? Tyvar asks. Since none of you are coming, yeah, I'm going alone, she says, backing towards the door. But I won't be alone when I get there. And what's your plan, exactly? Kaito calls. Chandra doesn't turn. Take down the tree. Figure everything else out along the way. Nice and easy. The marsh awaits, with Liliana as the last of the group standing in her way. Still, Liliana isn't quite blocking her, only leaning against the threshold, watching. You're serious about this, she says. Yeah, and you're serious about running away, aren't you? There are plenty of people who would kill for the chance to make Liliana Vess wince. Strangely, it doesn't feel like a victory to Chandra. None of this does, and that's the worst part. Is that what you think I'm doing? I'm not running. I just know funeral bells when I hear them. I wish you all the best on your little adventure. Wait, Chandra says. But Liliana doesn't. She walks out onto the marsh herself, hardly casting a backwards glance. Oh, there's no time for waiting. You said so yourself. Nothing about today is easy. Chandra opens and closes her hand again. She wants to argue or make it clear what she really meant that Liliana would be a huge help if she came, and maybe they could find some answers together. And maybe it's good to face your fears instead of running from them. But that'd be asking Liliana to be someone other than herself. And the two of them have always understood not to ask that of each other. Liliana disappears in a blink of inky vapor. Chandra Nalar gets to walking. The tears are hot when they leave her eyes. The cold air of the marsh threatens to freeze them against her skin. She turns up the heat to keep from shivering. She doesn't know how far she wants to go before she planes walks away. Really, she doesn't have to go far at all. She could do it here if she wanted to. But she wants to walk for a while. Feel the wind, smell the awful marsh smell. Look up at the dull gray. When she leaves, she may not see the sky again for some time. It isn't the vibrant azure of Kaladesh. The clouds here don't spiral. In fact, there aren't any clouds at all, only morass of gray in all directions. She can't smell ozone or stall food. She can't hear the din of the markets. This place is not home. This place is not what she will remember. That's fine. She'll come back. There will be other places. She'll make sure of it. Because when the world tree comes down, they're going to have so many other places to go. It'll be fine. After. She stops at the first tree she sees. It isn't a very strong tree, or even very healthy. Its bark has gone black, its branches empty and gnarled like claws raking against the sky. But it is a tree, and she thinks that's probably good enough for taking a breath. Chandra sits beneath its non-existent shade and throws her head back. Going to New Phyrexia is the right thing to do she's afraid it'll be fine she just needs a second to build up to it and maybe a second to cry before she planes walks right into the mouth of an evil empire defended by the people who were once her closest friends people she depended on to take that empire down they couldn't do it and now she's going off to do it alone a sudden coolness of the shifting leaves tells her that she's not alone Sniffling, Chandra frowns. Go away. Oh, I'd rather not. Then I'd have to return to the others. Ah, it's Ren. At least it isn't Kaya coming to try to talk her out of this. Still, Chandra can't think of anything to say. She tries not to sob as much now that she's got company, but she sobs all the same. I want to help. Chandra wipes the tip of her nose. You do? I do. How strange it was to watch you speak with the others. I thought you were making perfect sense. If a branch has gone rotten, you've got to cut it off before you can assess how the tree's doing. She doesn't know what a relief it would be to have someone understand her. Before, it felt like her anger was streaming out of her, but it's different now. Like it's melting out of the ground. Still, she has to be sure Ren means what she's saying. We won't have any backup. 
Don't speak so surely, Rin says. We have seven with us, and I think we'll have Teferi too. Teferi? But no one knows where he was. Or even if he's still alive. You're confused about that, aren't you? I think that's confusion on your face. It can be hard to tell sometimes what people are thinking just with their faces. You guessed right, Chandra says. You should give yourself more credit. If we had Teferi with us, you think you know where to find him? I think so, Ren says. She nods while Seven assumes a thinking posture. He's gotten himself caught in a tangle again, but it's nothing we can't solve. I've been studying it while we've been in this place. The twisting path he's gone down. I know how to reach him, but I won't be able to do it on my own. Well, you won't be on your own, Chandra says. The fear's leaving, too, as hope begins to rear its head. If she can get to ferry out from wherever he is, the odds improve considerably. You'll have me, Seven, and whoever else we find over there. But Ren looks away, her hand resting on Seven's bark. She's done so much for me, but he cannot do this. He cannot lend me power that he doesn't have. It must be the fire, and it must be the world tree. The most important thing about dealing with fire, Jaya always said, is knowing that it's dealing with you. You can guide it. You can make suggestions. You can give it a safe place to be. But in the end, it's always going to do what it wants. And what it wants changes from second to second. You have to be in conversation with it. If you mean to get anywhere, and you want to keep your friends safe. It's the exact opposite of dealing with trees. Chandra used to talk with Nyssa about it too. Nyssa used to tell her that sometimes turbulent growth, the sort that happened all at once, could be like fire. At first, Chandra hadn't believed her. Fire scours, nature nurtures. But then she saw what the royal was like on Zendikar, and it started to make sense. Sometimes it was the same. She liked it when nature surprised her. And more than anything, she liked listening to Nissa talk about it. She tried to help Ren figure things out the way Nissa had helped her, but teaching's a lot harder than listening, and Ren's fire isn't any normal flame. That she's standing there at all is a testament to her strength. If she's really going to set it loose, then the world tree might just be the only thing that can handle it. You're sure? I am, she says. The others were wrong. That tree is alive. I can hear his song from here. It's distant but pained. A howl without melody. He needs help, just as Teferi and the others do. If I were to ignore it, what sort of hero would I be? My own fright has little to do with it. Chandra offers a small, sad smile. Hero, huh? I'm frightened too, but less now that I've got company. You should find yourself a friend like Seven, Ren says. You'd never be lonely then. Unless that friend should happen to be lost on a plane full of vicious enemies and then she'd be very lonely indeed. Chandra's smile only gets sadder, but she stretches it out as if to hide it. She gives Seven a pat on the bark. Let's head out. Ren tilts her head, as if realizing she might have said something amiss, but the moment passes without comment. Soon they have left the shade of the barren tree. No one comes to see them off. Not anyone they can see, at any rate. But there is someone watching in the clearing. There's someone watching the safe house and the people within it huddled together in search of a purpose and direction. A trick of the light might reveal them, or might not. A keen nose might notice their scent, or it might not. But they are there, watching. All of this feels familiar to them, like a song whose lyrics have long since faded away. Over and over, they try and try to remember, and yet the words flit away. Only the melody remains. A lament for what is to come. A glorious anthem. The Watcher is not alone. There are others too, seeing and yet unseen. The Watcher asks one of them, What is it we're seeing? Why are we here? The answer comes like a trumpet of war horns. 
we are here to witness the beginning of the end. March of the Machine, Episode 2, Holding Your Breath Written by K. Arsenault Rivera Read by Wyatt Fawcett Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Magic Story. I am loving doing these audio format videos, reading the amazing magic story that is being published right now. And I'm very enthusiastic and absolutely adore the support and affection that some of you have expressed towards this endeavor and I want to keep doing them. We would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're not already a subscriber already. And if you missed it, definitely check out part one of the March of the Machine story. I'm trying to catch up before previews start next week. Um, and all of this is very exciting. So thank you again for listening. Thank you again for the community for being so supportive. And I will see you guys on the next plane.